M-I-P With Masamela Matsuma Mark Thompson Make it kind Get woke God bless you all We want to, as always, welcome you to the show Now, and we also want to remind you That this Saturday, August 28th We'll be gathering at the Lincoln Memorial For Make Good Trouble Rally We invite you to join us if you're in Washington, D.C. And if you cannot join us, you can watch live at makeitplain.com and on a number of other platforms that will you be able to see it. We'll be live from the Lincoln Memorial, not only as we commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Great March on Washington, led by John Lewis and Dr. King and A. Philip Randolph and Dorothy Height, but also to deal with some of the very pressing issues of the day. And and a new issue has developed. We'll get into that momentarily, but a new issue has developed that we really have to address. We had a in in, in working on the march, we we came up with with 10 issues, including ending the filibuster, restoring voting rights, HR 40, the reparations commission bill, all of these things ending the war against women. Frankly, that's some phraseology I've not forgotten. I, I'm stuck on that. Some people don't want to say there's a war against women anymore. Oh, that was an old phrase, Mark, from a couple of years ago. But when did it end? We, we have to be very, very careful about declaring wars that have ended that really have not ended. In any event, we're gathering on Saturday. We invite you to go to Make Good Trouble Rally. Dot com. Go to make good trouble rally dot com to find out more. There's a lot that we have to fight for. You know, in 1963, there were days of civil disobedience which led up to August 28th, 1963, the Great March on Washington. And then after August 28th, 1963, there were more direct actions, more civil disobedience as a matter of fact. And so this is really an opportunity for everyone to come together, to reset, to recharge their batteries, and to refocus on why we all are here and what we are fighting for. Jobs and freedom was the thing in 1963. That was the demand. And here we are in 2021. We've got more demands, restoring voting rights, granting D.C. statehood, in, ending the filibuster, bringing H.R. 40 to the floor, raising the minimum wage to $15, investing in workers, canceling student debt, reimagining public safety and ending mass incarceration. And let me just pause there. When you say reimagine public safety, I know some people are for or against defund the police, but wherever you are on that spectrum, it's got to be about reimagining public safety. Because what's taking place right now is not public safety. The, the, the current state of policing is not public safety. Ending gun violence, funding peace, resisting the war against women, classism, discrimination, hate and phobias of all kinds, reversing climate change, building a green economy. But then there's this one, reforming immigration and creating a pathway to citizenship for undocumented people. Make good trouble rally.com. So the issue, as I said earlier, about being involved in a war and not realizing it's, it isn't over. I was talking about the war against women, but we could also make that applicable to what has been going on in Afghanistan, ladies and gentlemen, in Afghanistan. This war has gone on for far too long. Now, I'm not one who is opposed to criticizing presidents, but I'm not interested in making stuff up either. So let's remind ourselves how we got into this. Let's remind ourselves how we became so caught up in this situation, okay? And really, we, we, we probably need to go back even further than, than maybe what I initially started <laughs> thinking about. Because as I've said, you all have lose, who listen to Make It Plain over the years, I've been consistent. We all know this. My statements have been that Afghanistan is undefeated. That is a place where empires go to war and ultimately go to die. So if America is not vanquished as a nation because of its involvement in Afghanistan, America's coming out pretty well. 
Remember, America lured the Soviet Union into Afghanistan. And that ultimately is what brought down the Soviet Union. And who fought the Soviet Union in Afghanistan but the Mujahideen under the leadership of one Osama bin Laden? Malcolm suffered and pays for saying, Malcolm X for saying, the chickens have come home to roost. Now, I don't know what chickens are going to come home from this, this current Afghanistan situation, but chickens are going to be coming home to roost. We'll see what they are. This, what I'm about to share with you all, it incenses you, it incenses me. You have the Bush administration, former Bush administration official, Mark Thiessen, now a, I guess, a Fox contributor, taking a shot at Biden over Afghanistan. Here he is with Dana Perino. Well, and Dana, too. Shoot, Dana's a, a, a Bush, former Bush administration official. Oh, and guess what network this is? You know what network this is? None other than Fox News. Take a listen. So one thing that the administration has been doing through President Biden's statements, even the Secretary of Defense, um, Secretary of State, and the National Security Advisor, they're using a lot of numbers, right? I, you watch these speeches, you listen to them, and it's just they're trying to kill you with numbers. There's this many people and this many places, and it feels like a checklist. And it feels like it's missing the point, but not, and it doesn't seem to match what we're hearing from people who are working to try to get American citizens and interpreters out of Afghanistan. What do you think about that as a, you know, kind of like a crutch to get through? Well, I, I think that providing numbers is, is useful, but if the numbers are, contra as you say, if it's contrary to what we're seeing on the ground, uh, then, then the numbers don't matter, just like the words don't matter. If the, if the word, you know, I, w I was in the Bush administration from 2004 to 2009, and during the worst parts of the Iraq war, no matter what the president said, uh, if we didn't turn around the battle on the ground, it didn't matter what he said. Our words only started having an effect on public opinion when he launched the surge and we turned around the battle and we said we were, we were winning on the ground. And so, you know, the numbers I'd like to see are how many Americans are there left right. uh, that you haven't, uh, that you haven't collected yet? How many Afghans are there left, uh, who are our allies that, that we haven't collected yet? And when are, what is the, what is that number? Because here's my here's my fear. You know, the August, the deadline is coming up. The Taliban have said that there's going to be consequences if we overstay our deadline. And let's say we get all the Americans out who have reached out to the embassy, but there are still tens of thousands of Afghans who who risk their lives to protect American soldiers. Are we just going to pull up and pull up our tents and go home because the Americans are out? Uh, that you know, there, there's a massive job to be done, and we've got to tell these we got to tell the uh, the Taliban. We are we we set the clock. You don't set the clock. We decide uh, when when the deadline is and when it is. So, so much of that feels like that. So much of that feels like we just left. sorry. So much of that feels like we just allow that moment to pass, Mark. Uh, so you got eight days on the calendar coming up on more MIP after this message. So so you heard that, and, and Mark went a little bit off script in terms of speaking about the Afghani's because. There are those who really are uh, upset also about the actual uh, numbers of people who are coming into this country as refugees. There, there are some who don't want that. There are some who are offended by those coming in, into this country who are refugees. That, that's the problem. We, we don't want these people here. We don't want these refugees here in this country. We don't want people who look like this coming into America. That's not what we want. That's what we're, that's what we're fighting against. That's the real thing. Now, <laughs> let's, be, let's be clear about that. What people are really upset about, Jim Acosta addressed this on CNN. The pictures of Afghan clinging to the military planes are not what riles up the Fox audience. These images of Afghans loaded onto those planes. Is it really our responsibility to welcome thousands of potentially unvetted refugees from Afghanistan? All day we've heard phrases like, we promised them. Well, who did? Did you, did you? I digress. The pictures of Afghans clinging to the military planes are not what riles up the Fox audience. It's these images of Afghans loaded onto those planes. Is it really our responsibility to welcome thousands of potentially unvetted refugees from Afghanistan? 
all day we've heard phrases like we promised them. Well, who did? Did you? Did you? I digress. So that's Laura Ingram. Ingram. I never know how to pronounce her name for some reason. Maybe it's because I don't give a damn about her. <laughs> she don't give a damn about anybody else. Just a little bit more from that episode with Jim Acosta on his show, where you have even Stephen Miller, who still has a right to run his mouth on with Laura. You think Trump was going to bring all of his Afghan partners back to the U.S.? Let's ask one of the architects of Trump's immigration policy. The United States of America never, ever made a promise, written or unwritten, to the people of Afghanistan that if after 20 years they were unable to secure their own country, that we would take them to arms. That is nonsense. That has never been U.S. government policy. You think Trump? That, that's, that's Stephen Miller. So that, that's what's also really going on. So one, he's, so if you listen, if you go back, what did Mark Thiessen say? It's, it's hitting both ways. Are we going to not protect those who fought with and for us as Afghans? And then now these other people are saying, we don't want these people coming to our country. That's what I believe the Clintons call triangulation. Really, that's, that's, that's what it is. We can't abandon them, but they can't come here. Biden may, has been making and has made a good point. We didn't leave Afghanistan now. When do we leave? Another 10 years? Another five years? Another year? I'm not about to send your son and your daughter to fight in Afghanistan. I don't see where that is in our overwhelming interest in the talk. When do we leave? When does it end? Now, when Trump was in office, nobody had a problem with him saying the war should end. Nobody had a problem with that. But when Biden says it, we, we go crazy. But when Trump said it, it was okay. Altogether, we lifted approximately 11,000 people out of a couple in less than 36 hours. It's an incredible operation. Let me be clear. The evacuation of thousands of people from Kabul is going to be hard and painful, no matter when it started, when we began. Would have been true if we had started a month ago or a month from now. There is no way to evacuate this many people without pain and loss of heartbreaking images you see at television. It's just a fact. My heart aches for those, those people you see. We are proving that we can move those thousands of people a day out of Kabul. We're bringing our citizens, NATO allies, Afghanis who would help, in fact, has helped us in the war effort. We have a long way to go, and a lot could still go wrong. But to move out 30,000 people in just over a week, that's a great testament to the men and women on the ground in Kabul and armed services. Joe Biden on what's taking place. Those are the numbers that you heard earlier, earlier that Mark Thiessen and Dana Perino were tripping about. There have been a large number of people evacuated. I don't know when that was supposed to start. Um, but then here's what he had to say. And, and, and he gets a te- one, one minute. You don't leave Afghans who, Afghanis who fought with us behind the next minute. We don't want these refugees. But take a listen to this. Planes taking off from Kabul are not flying directly to the United States. They're landing in U.S. military bases and transit centers around the world. Number two, at these sites where they're landing, we are conducting thorough scrutiny, security screening for everyone who is not a U.S. citizen or a lawful permanent residence. Anyone arriving in the United States will have undergone background check. Number three, once screened and cleared, we will welcome these Afghans who have helped us in the war effort over the last 20 years to their new home in the United States of America. Because that's who we are. That's who America is. You know, I've been touched by the outpouring of support that we've seen from communities, organizations across America mobilizing to support these efforts. So many of these Afghans stood bravely by U.S. troops in Afghanistan. And now, the United States, including veterans groups, Refugee settlement agencies, religious organizations, and so many others are standing with our Afghan allies. It exemplifies the best of America. More MIP after this message. The, the irony here is being a refugee is not easy. There is, separ- is family separation going on because of this crisis. No one cares about that. I, I think we're going to deal with that on Saturday. I think we're going to address that somehow. 
I think we're going to have an opportunity to speak to that. But this is a crisis that was started by the Bush administration. This is a crisis that began there. And, and to be fair, again, maybe not even the Bush administration, let's go back to the United States relationship with Afghanistan for many, many years, how we got into it in the first place. And I would begin even with, and that was frankly the Carter administration. And many people consider Jimmy Carter a dove, but it was the CIA in the Carter administration. And who's to say that, that these wheels weren't put in motion even before the Carter administration? To, to use Afghanistan in that way. I'm sure Putin is saying, look at y'all. Putin is a holdover from the Soviet Union trying to continue the Soviet Union's governance style vis-a-vis -vis a mafia oligarchy. Of course, he loved to have the KGB back. It's not FSB, but he loved to have the KGB back, but that was destroyed because of being bogged down in Afghanistan. So America is doing good for those of you who love America and don't want to see America destroyed. What does Mark mean to love America? Well, I can't love nobody that doesn't love me back. Hello. I mean, a lot of us do that. We love people who don't love us. That's not a good thing. Anybody tell you that? Thousands of people have been evacuated. It, 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 Biden's right. When is it supposed to end? The only thing, and, and I, I'm saying this without even really doing a full analysis based upon you know full knowledge of what the options were the only other thing would have been to have started evacuating the people months ago little by little by little by little by little i don't know i don't know if that was an option i'm just throwing it out there as if that was available maybe that should have been the case our friend eric bowler writes that the u.s has successfully evacuated 30,000 people from afghanistan since the end of july 8,000 people have departed, departed on Saturday alone. So people getting up out of there. So over half a million people died of COVID last year. Nobody's talking about that anymore under President Trump. But we're tripping about Biden because we have to do the false equivalency. We have to and, and, and prove that we're not a liberal media. And then people want to even escalate what's going on. What's this guy's name? Greg Stubbe. Again, Dana Perino, Bush administration official. Fox News. She legitimizes Fox News because of her former administration position. And Fox News legitimizes her. Congressman Greg Stubbe, listen to this. Well, myself, I'm, Congress needs to act. So myself and a Democrat, a California Democrat, filed a bill on Friday to demand that Congress declare that we're going to go in and we're going to get American citizens out and tell the Biden administration that they're going at any means necessary to get our, our citizens out. And we're going to go in and get our vehicles, our aircraft, and our equipment so they're not in the hands of the Taliban. Do you get the sense, sir, from your um, contacts or from the briefings that there is a disconnect or daylight between the Department of Defense or maybe what our military wants to do and what they're being allowed to do from civilian leadership? Well, absolutely. I think there's a whole lot of people like myself. I'd go over there tomorrow if I could go over there and help. There's a lot of Americans that would go over there tomorrow to go over to the help. That's the cowboy thing. Dun, 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 dun. I'm going to go over there and help. You're not going to do anything. You can't do anything. What have you done? Congressman uh, Greg Stewart, Republican on Fox News. He's arguing for even more escalation. Where has that gotten us? So again, we are Lincoln Memorial. Dr. King was being drafted to run for president in 1968 by the peace movement. He was headed back to the mall for Resurrection City, for the Poor People's Campaign. We're going to do that again. On, so we're going to pick up where he left off. And we've got to talk about war and studying war no more. What about all of the families who lost loved ones in this unnecessary non-difference making war in Afghanistan. So we don't so we don't care about people dying of COVID. The same people who are tripping about this don't want people to get vaccinated. Don't want people to wear masks. We don't care about people dying from COVID. And I'm not going to get into that. I know some of you have your reasons for not wanting to get vaccinated. But let me just say this. At this hour, everybody I know who doesn't want to get vaccinated is staying home and taking every other precaution. People I know not these right-wing nut jobs, RWNJs who are running around outside acting crazy, but the people who want to run around outside, maskless, vaccineless, are also saying, let's continue to prosecute a war in Afghanistan. No. So we're going to take this opportunity, even on Saturday, to call up 
and remember what Dr. King said. This is, it's, it's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous argument. But anything to attack Joe Biden because he's a Democrat and because unfortunately we still have just a two-party system, the wolf and the fox, as Malcolm would say. And you really can't win much with either one of those. But that's a whole nother conversation. At least the fox, you know, won't eat you. The fox gets eaten more than it eats you. That's the thing we, we got to understand. And those of us who are in the fox party, we're the ones being eaten, including those who were in the Afghanistan war. We pray for all of those families who often lost loved ones in that war. We thank them for their service to our country. That's what people do, they serve and they suffer the consequences. We pray for those Afghan people who are suffering and struggling. Those women who will be persecuted at the hands of the Taliban. We pray for all of them as well. Thanks for getting woke and listening to Make It Plain. Please remember to listen, like, and wherever you get your podcasts, please give the show a five-star rating. And please do spread the word. Let's all continue to pray for each other during this pandemic and this police-demic. If all hearts and minds are clear, it has been made plain.